This is Romans 1 and verse 18. For the wrath of the Most High is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Kal halal Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Rukhwa Kodash. Double honors, the apostle is a great millstone where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations, their brothers on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson Esau Edom and normalized degeneracy will be cleansed by fire. That's the only cure for this man, this, this Edomite, this leprous man. I saw a few videos, you just can't keep quiet on some of this wickedness and nastiness, the rebellion against our power, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, is Yahweh Shai, and we are the true children of Israel. Given us a bunch of names that we care not much for those, but this man, he actually passes laws to protect his perversion and had it that it's now, it's normal, certain behavior, he's trying to normalize it, he's forced his own uh, degeneracy, debauchery and madness. I don't even have the words for some of this foolishness. I mean, listen to some of these. You, you can marry your horse. An infant can have his penis uh, uh, removed before he even knows what it is. I heard someone saying, I'm just repeating this. It's absolute madness. You can le legally uh, teach infants, uh, male and female, the same. You, you can, it doesn't matter what goes where, everyone's the same. Now you've got this uh, maps thing. Well, it's not new. It's been a little while now, but what's it? Minor, I didn't write, minor attracted persons, I think it is. So you can be an adult and a little baby you're attracted to, this baby, all this sick uh, perversion. And this is now protected in the laws. Let's go straight back to the scriptures. All this uh, stuff is uh, reviling and sickening. But we have to speak against it. Romans 1, it's all in the book. So we read the book. We're safe in the arms of the truth that is written in the book. Romans 1. And we teach these Speak this truth with no fear. Romans 1, uh, let's go now, 21. Because that when they knew the Most High, they glorified him not as the Most High. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Well, they, they deny there is any power outside of themselves. They who? It's this man calling himself the white man. I want you to call me white He's a Edomite, that's his true biblical nationality. And he is known as the wicked. It's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Malachi 1 and 4 tells you. And Job 9, 24, he's got rulership of the earth. So that's how he's able to push his madness on the earth. Where was I? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, the Most High gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. See, this is Paul speaking to the Hebrew Israelites based in Rome who were following after these what you call Greekish fashions. It's like the leftover from the when we were following up after all these people and, and got their practices and just doing as they were doing. So character, you've got all these religions, especially this uh, Jeebus Cross person. You've got Buddha, you've got Muhammad. You've got all a bunch of all these. Uh, Krishna, uh, what's this one used to live next door to me? Uh, uh, Guru Nanak, one of these Hindu, uh, is in East Indian gods. And thousands and thousands of gods. All these are corruptible. Who change the truth of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai unto a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, the Most High gave them up unto vile affection. And that's what all this is. It's really, it's vile, it's beyond words. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. See, 
you know, how much of this madness the Most High is going to take? And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning their lust one unto another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Heavenly Father gave them over to a reprobate mind, a mind void of any understanding, to do those things which are not convenient. And then you get a list of all of these uh, behaviors. It's chapter verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of the Most High, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only you've got this uh, YOLO, you only live once, so you can just do everything. It doesn't matter. There's no recompense. Well, they've got that wrong. Our power is going to cleanse the earth of all of this filth. Who, knowing the judgment of the Most High, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So, so there's people just stand by the wayside or just don't care whatever everybody else is doing. That's fine by them. And actually have pleasure in some of the madness. They're not speaking out against it. What's this? The alphabet agenda is really it's just rebellion against the Most High. And we used to have this phrase, I don't know if people still use it, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And that's exactly, I think that's probably where it comes from. Carrying on with these practices, we're next, um, 1 Corinthians 6. It's a reminder here, what? Verse 19, what know ye not that your holy, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are the, the Heavenly Fathers. We belong to him. We who? They're calling us Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. This judgment is around the corner. There's some brutal, swift judgment that is taking place. And we are to worship and fear our power. In spirit and in truth, let's get some of this. Warning here, Leviticus 18. Let's get the first few verses here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. See, the, the Most High does put a difference between Israel and the other nations. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. We're not following after these crazy laws and worshipping their gods and all of their degeneracy. No, we're not. Ye shall do my judgments. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances. Let's read it correctly. To walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. There's a difference there. We're not like the other nations. There's a total of 18, and the Lord has put a difference between the Egyptian, who's the modern day Egyptian? Well, it's this. Man built himself up, he's the Pharaoh all puffed up, the Edomite calling himself the white man, the Edomite. That's who you are and you can't get away from it. Second Corinthians 10, let's go from three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm reading this because of this, this strongholds um, phrase here. It's all this perversion and de degeneracy. It's a serious stronghold that has gotten a mind and gripped everyone into just accepting certain types of behaviors. No matter how 
uh, distasteful and crazy it seems. You just accept everything. You just Anyone can just do anything. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahawashai Hamashiach. Every thought is going to be bought under obedience. Once this destruction is taken place and uh, ridded the world of all of this perversion. Now let's get a few single verses here making this point here. Let's get some in Proverbs. Proverbs 2 and 22. But the wicked who is Esau Edom calling himself the white man shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Let's get it. Proverbs 10 and verse 30. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. See, there's a, a payback for these behaviors. Proverbs 14 and 11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. You're not going to get away, Mr. Edom. There is a payback. Let's get some in Psalms. Just a few. There's so many scriptures here. That I have. Psalms 28. Let's go from three. Draw me not away from the draw me not away from the wicked and the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors. Draw me not away with the wicked. And with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Keep them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. You're going to be destroyed, Esau, Adam. And unfortunately, a bunch of our folks have joined themselves unto this man. Psalms 37, let's go from 38, get the last few verses in the chapter. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Verse 40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. We've been called back. We refer to ourselves as the hopeful elect. We're waking up to his truth. It's our truth. It doesn't belong to anybody else. Uh, Psalm 94. Psalm 94, let's go from 21. Yes, 21, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense and my power is a rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord, our power, shall cut them off. They're going to be removed from the earth. There'll be no one with these features anymore. This leprous man, no melanin in his skin, dog-like, stringy hair. We won't have to look at that anymore after he serves his thousand years or so of hardcore slavery. Psalms 101. And eight I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off the wicked, all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. It's getting ready. Place all the jigsaw pieces have been put in place. Remember, uh, Isaiah 13. Let's just get a few, all of this chapter. Let's just get a couple of these. Start at nine. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. 
For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. This is repeated in Yahweh, I repeated it in, in, uh, in Matthew. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. That's that wicked man is going to be put to one side. Let's get a few here in yeah. Isaiah 34. Let's go from two is another one of these chapters, every word, every verse. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. They're being lined up over there in the Middle East right now, or what they call the Middle East. The Euphrates River is all dried up. It's all, it's all been put in place. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountain shall be melted with their blood and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree for my sword shall be bathed in heaven behold it shall come down upon idumia that's edom the white man and upon the people of my curse that's who he is to judgment the sword of the lord is filled with blood and is made fat with fatness and the blood of the lambs and goats with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bosra. That's America, Babylon the Great. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. You're going to get it, Esau, Edom. All of your degeneracy is going to be met with the fury and wrath of our power. That is getting ready to be unleashed in the earth. Just finish up with here, just reminding Peter, reminding us who we are, First Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's hold it there for the lesson set apart this normalized degeneracy will not stand and we're speaking up against it with no fear you can listen to Esau Edom's normalized degeneracy will be cleansed by fire shalom to the next lesson no fear no guy